As COVID-19 continues to batter global economies, including that of Uganda, the conversation among economies is now shifting to how Uganda can manage the recovery better, dealing with the impact of the crisis and the inherent economic challenges that had persisted even before the crisis. We can build back better. So building back better, how do we bring extension in a different mold by embedding not just the climate smart agriculture practices, can we deliver it in such a manner that we are actually embedding practices that are making our smallholder farmer, our agribusinesses more resilient? Can we do more of it actually? You know, at the moment, uh, 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 indeed, there's a budget for extension. There's a bit that's being done, but it is an ongoing process that even informs quality management. So if you see uh, uh, Kenya or the region uh, saying no to our maize, all of a sudden, a big crisis for people who have invested heavily in a lot of maize, but it goes right down to the farm and, and, and practices that should have been managed there, controlled there, are, are missing in action. The reason why emphasis is placed on supporting agriculture is because of its ability to expand amidst this crisis, with subsectors such as coffee reporting unprecedented export numbers in the COVID crisis year of 2020. This assertion is consistent with what the Minister of Finance says. It has already witnessed growth and expansion of some sectors and subsectors of the economy. Um, manufacturing actually did very well. And we had uh, new uh, things that we are producing in this country that we had not produced before, um, especially sanitizers and other PPEs, which uh, we took on. Uh, we had... Uh, the steel uh, subsector also doing very well. To the central bank, some of these green shots are made a crisis, especially for the manufacturing sector, are partly a result of timely and responsive policies, like the current monetary policy stance taken by the bank. So the fact that Uganda had a strong macro foundation, were able to ease monetary policy by doing CBR. I know there are some people who say the pass through from CBR to earning interest rate has really been you know, very small. That, that's a fair comment. But also, that is at a macro level. But particular sectors benefited from that easing. For example, if you look at, I look at numbers every day. If I look at, say, interest rate to particular sectors like, say, manufacturing, averaged around, uh, now it is averaging around 15% in the, uh, between, uh, uh, you know, between January and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, uh, and April. 15% is down compared to where we were, around 18% for the same se sector. But even as economists look at the brighter side of the crisis, the economy broadly remains in the woods, with critical performance indicators like the country's debt touching worrying levels. Because when you look at our growth trajectory before, we had actually been growing at very high rates, 6.8. We had uh, expected to grow by uh, about 6.5. So the the things that we are doing, the policies, I think we are right for growth. And uh, then comes in the COVID pandemic, there is a lockdown, and the lockdown had a lot of impact. Of course, uh, going forward, we thought that uh, we are recovering, but we pray that the second wave, uh, which has just come now, does not really hurt us a lot. Today, uncertainty still remains about how much impact COVID-19 will have on Uganda's economy. But a crisis, according to some experts, also offers a good reflection moment for planners to reconfigure the economy for better performance moving forward. Well, it's time now to take a very short commercial break. Man and Markets continues after this break. <laughs>